Google Stadia promised to be the future of gaming by doing something that many have tried in the past. Google is offering games as a service rather than a product, eliminating the pesky nature of paying for something just once and owning it, and instead allowing you to pay for it every month until you die. Google's history of ongoing product support hasn't been great, so you might not have to worry about the until you die part. It'll probably die first, but we've advised against pre-ordering Stadia because of Google's history. We also thought we'd still be able to easily gain day one access by paying for it so that we could tell you if it's actually any good in the event that they've really done something that others couldn't. Unfortunately, we ended up having to buy another key off of a viewer whom we greatly appreciate, thanks Chris, as Google still hadn't delivered most of the pre-order keys by the second day after launch. Today we're focusing on testing Stadia for latency as this is the biggest technical challenge of a game streaming service. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Drop and Hi-Fi Man HE4XX Planar Magnetic Headphones. The HE4XX headphones focus on high-quality audio listening experiences with comfortable foam cushions for the ear cups. Comfort is also ensured with a leather-covered spring steel headband, allowing flexibility and durability against bends. These headphones are capable of delivering big sound for audiophiles while being positioned competitively in price. Learn more at the link in the description below. Although our focus is on latency today, it's worth throwing in some notes on support because probably not many reviewers have had to go down this path like we did since we, we bought it retail for this one. So the quick note on support before diving into the numbers is that when we hadn't received our key yet by day two, and we did pre-order this product, mind you, and, and a lot of people were in the same boat as us. When we hadn't received it, we joined the live chat support, waited about three, three and a half hours for a live chat representative to respond, and then we're fortunate enough to spend about 30 minutes in live chat with this representative. And after kind of getting past the Google canned response, which was, we have no idea when you're going to get your codes, we're sending them out in the order that the pre-orders were made, they eventually the representative was very kind and did actually show some sympathy and answered questions more personally, not representing the company. So we appreciate that representative, but it obviously didn't really help us. So the support was, was not good. Waiting three hours plus for support is absolutely terrible. And then the answer at the end of three hours is we can't help you. So it should just say that at the beginning, since that was a common question. The question being, where are my game codes that I paid for? All we wanted to do with Stadia on day one was some basic response time tests. We'd prepared a 144 hertz Oris gaming monitor by Gigabyte, a mouse with an LED that we soldered into the left mouse button so that we could see when it was clicked visually, and a high frame rate camera. By filming the screen and the LED, we can left click, note the frame that the LED turns off, use software to count the number of frames accurately, you can do it manually too, until there's an on-screen response, and multiply that number out to get a rough response time in milliseconds. Our test resolution is about 4.2 milliseconds from 240 FPS. A higher FPS camera would give you a bit more precise measurements, but 4.2 milliseconds is definitely good enough on the scale of Stadia. The time that we end up with includes any delay from the mouse, the device it's plugged into, the monitor, and in Stadia's case, the network. Please remember that we have not cut out these delays intentionally from our final results, and our results can only be accurately compared against themselves, not results from other reviewers using different methods and different hardware. We took five samples for each average, and the maximum and minimum response times out of these five samples are also listed on the chart. Google does use AMD Navi GPUs, so we felt like the 5700 XT was a good fit for this, and to be clear, we chose the ASRock Tai Chi X version. So natural choice for comparison, no NVIDIA features allowed in this, this eliminates any possibility of that, and games running on Stadia won't use things like Gameworks or RTX ray tracing features, they are Navi GPUs in the data center. Next up, network matters a lot for this type of testing, and we have two types of network available to us for testing and validation. One of those is a residential gigabit fiber connection to my house, Google Fiber at that, so that's fitting. And the other one is a commercial 100 megabit per second symmetrical fiber connection to our office. Symmetrical being that we can send 100 megabits up per second at the same time as we can receive 100 megabits per second down. Unlike residential, non-fiber, non-symmetrical lines where you might be constrained on one or the other based on the activity. We, we have a symmetrical connection here and then we have gigabit up and down at my house for, for further validation as needed. This brings up another point, which we won't go too far into, but if you have not great internet options near you, then obviously this service is going to be a, a potential non-starter. And Google itself rates connections, so they rated our connection, even the slower, our 100 megabit per second connection 
symmetrical here, the fiber line, Google rates as excellent and calls it capable of streaming up to 4K HDR, its maximum available service. Everyone's mileage will vary based on internet quality, slower connections in most of the world exist, and particularly in a lot of America, our, our internet is really not great here. So you might struggle with image quality as bandwidth becomes limited. You might struggle with data caps, and we really feel bad for you if you have them. Can't do anything about it, but at least you can know someone feels bad about it. Other limitations exist as well. But that's the main stuff to worry about on the network side. We're covered, though. We're good to go for testing. We could have gone a step further and used the 2080 Ti for PC testing, but we wanted to use Navi, and the 5700XT is fully capable of running these games at the resolution we're using for comparison, which is 1080p. Unless otherwise stated, Ethernet is used in all tests. Wireless tests would be marked as such if we have any. The only wireless tests you really need to pay attention to are where we have a wireless controller hooked up to the Chromecast, but the Chromecast itself is hooked up via Ethernet. The monitor, unless otherwise stated, is set to 144Hz at the OS level, and in-game frame rate is uncapped in all tests, again, unless otherwise stated. For our games, we picked Thumper, Mortal Kombat, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Metro Exodus. Thumper and Mortal Kombat both benefit from the tightest possible response times. Thumper is graphically lightweight enough that anything can run it at a high frame rate, which is why we chose it, even at 4K. And Metro Exodus is a graphically demanding enough game that higher settings can really tank the performance, even on a high-end gaming PC. Mortal Kombat is intended to run at a constant frame rate, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider has a wide performance range based on the settings chosen. Let's start by examining the input to output response times of games running locally on our test PC. The goal here was to determine how much graphical settings and frame rate could affect the response times. After all, Stadia streaming over the internet isn't the only factor that could cause it to lag. Also, the getting the codes can cause it to lag, but that's a separate issue. We'll just focus on two examples for this, since it's supposed to be a Stadia content piece only. We did some tests at 5K VSR or 5120 by 2880 in order to create a heavy load on the GPU without changing any other settings. The entire point of this test was just to really strain the system and run at an unplayable frame rate. And then we also did 1080p tests for this. The refresh rate was still 144 for both. We don't use VSync for any of the tests. Stadia currently caps out at 60 hertz for refresh rate and 4K for resolution. But we aren't trying to do a like-for-like -like comparison here. We're just trying to see how much stressing our GPU can contribute to input latency. After we get through these numbers, we'll look at more like-for-like -like data with Stadia. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is an easy example of a game that's noticeably more responsive at lower graphic settings. At 1080p, with the lowest preset and a frame rate that can easily keep up with the monitor's 144Hz refresh rate, we saw an average of 47.5 milliseconds passing between a left click and a visible response. At 5K, with the maximum preset and an unplayably bad frame rate, we averaged a massive 217.5 milliseconds between input and response. That'd be one-fifth of a second or so before you see your click actually do something in the game. The point here is really just to show that the frame rate is a consideration in test methodology, particularly since we want to maintain a 144Hz refresh rate so that we can whittle down the error to about 6.9 milliseconds, which is what the 144Hz refresh would be. Continuing with one more PC-only example, we'll look at Metro Exodus next, and then Stadia will follow that. Like Tomb Raider, Metro Exodus can range from a lightweight and responsive game at 1080 minimum to a sluggish nightmare at 2880 or 5K max. Metro Exodus at maximum settings and resolution averaged one of the slowest response times we measured in any of our tests at 270.8 milliseconds between input and output. This is the total latency, not a delta, and yes, we know this is not a realistic scenario for playing, but that's the point. We're just trying to make a worst case scenario. How bad can latency get just from really bad frame rate? Between Tomb Raider and Metro, our best responses were 45 to 54 milliseconds, establishing something of a best case baseline. And remember that you're not actually going to see your response from an input until there's a frame to draw. So that is the, the reason we're seeing some of these numbers. Our initial PC testing confirmed what we already knew, which is that running games at 4K on Stadia and making higher demands on Google's hardware and the instancing of it could lead to increased response times even beyond bandwidth or internet speed issues, which pose an entirely different set of challenges for users on slower connections. Our first tests with Stadia were on the same PC in a Chrome browser window. As many outlets have already reported, in-browser streaming is limited to 1080p 60, so we'll be using games running at 1080p locally for comparison. Stadia on PC accepts mouse, keyboard, and gamepad input, including the Stadia controller, but only if it's plugged in, as of this writing anyway. First up is Thumper. Thumper is a game that runs well on basically everything. We mentioned Metro Exodus and Shadow of the Tomb Raider as games where graphic settings and 
resolution could have a big impact on frame rate and response time, but Thumper is not one of those. There are barely any graphics options, even on PC, and it'll run fast unless the frame rate is intentionally capped. Stadia's 60 FPS limit is hurting it here with a 63.3 millisecond increase in average response time from PC to Stadia in browser. Stadia is far behind the best PC result at 280% more time required to display the input, but 87.5 milliseconds still isn't terrible for video games in general. We were actually a little impressed with this one. The problem is that Thumper is a rhythm game, and streaming isn't the ideal way to play it, especially when it's already so undemanding. There's even a mobile version of this one. And rhythm game players, as one, myself, are neurotic about input latencies. So 87.5, although really not bad in the scope of things, is certainly still a lot higher than the PC. Thumper felt good enough to play on Stadia, though, at least in the early stages of the game. As a rhythm game, it's more a matter of anticipating and hitting beats rather than reacting quickly to unexpected things. So it's possible to naturally lead your shots a little bit and adjust for that extra latency. It does also feel like a weird choice to intentionally make to, to play a rhythm game on a streaming service to begin with, but there's a couple of use cases we could think of where maybe it makes sense. This one would just run on so many different devices that it's not as easy to understand why you'd want to play it on Stadia. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we have a range of PC average response times from 47.5 milliseconds at 1080p with the minimum preset to 61.7 milliseconds at 1080p Ultra. At best, there's a 49.7 millisecond penalty added for using the streaming service instead of a local system. At worst, it's about a 63 millisecond difference slower than the local system. Response time is a little less vital here than it is in the rhythm game, or a fighting game, or a Twitch shooter, which describes something like half of Stadia's current lineup. Out of the games offered, Tomb Raider is a fairly logical and functional example, at least in terms of response time. None of us are avid Tomb Raider players, but the level of latency in this port is playable based on the early game that we've tested. It's single player, it's not constantly requiring fast, reflexive responses, and it's a game that might run slowly even on mid-range gaming computers. So this one's a relatively good fit for Stadia. Metro Exodus is next. This one tells much the same story as Tomb Raider with a similar gap of 51.6 milliseconds between response times with the max PC 1080p settings and the Stadia result. However, Metro is a first-person shooter, if you have any bullets anyway. The beginning of the game is not too forgiving with that, and that makes it more dependent on response times than some of the others. This game didn't feel good on Stadia. Metro is a game with limited ammo, and nobody is going to have fun dumping that ammo behind enemies due to response time. On PC, we're able to turn down the settings to minimum. On Stadia, the best you can do is turn on low bandwidth mode to 720p and hope that that fixes things, which it doesn't really, and also it looks really bad. You get a lot of color banding and just generally poor quality. It kind of looks like a really, it looks like a video that you've compressed and recompressed multiple times or transcoded multiple times. Not a good look. Graphic settings and stream quality next can both affect the response time and they go hand in hand with Stadia. For example, it's known by now that some titles run at 30 FPS on Stadia in 4K mode and 60 FPS at lower resolutions. This was especially obvious in Metro Exodus in our testing. We've also heard that at least one game potentially upscales rather than running natively at 4K. But again, we're focusing exclusively on response times for today. To that end, we ran some passes on the Chromecast Ultra with the wireless Stadia controller, part of the $130 startup package, and we compared the response times from 4K mode with those from 720p mode. We can't directly choose an output resolution for Stadia, but we can force it to stream at 720p by choosing the lowest of the three quality options in the app. That menu, though, is disabled in the browser for now. You, you actually have to use a phone app to change functionally the resolution, which is stupid, really. But when comparing the following results to the previous 1080p Stadia numbers, keep in mind that the 4K and 720p tests were done on a Chromecast the size of an Oreo, still using Ethernet, instead of a browser running on an actual PC. So there's probably some additional hardware bottlenecking. The Chromecast also runs hot, and we suspect that it's possible it could throttle to some degree after it heats up. We can't do direct A-B testing on bottlenecking to find any of this out because the Chromecast requires a controller, and the Stadia controller can't be wired to the Chromecast or used wirelessly with the PC as of now. More on that later, though. 
Thumper response times were pretty varied on the Chromecast compared to in-browser, but it's also harder to judge the button presses without the aid of an LED, and that's why we take averages, so it works out. There's a 45.9 millisecond gap between the 4K and 720p results, which is mostly down to demands on the network rather than the hardware. As we mentioned before, Thumper is a very lightweight game, and even 4K60 should be easily within the capabilities of Google's machines. We can treat this as a baseline for the next couple of charts. Next chart, the gap is actually narrower for Tomb Raider in 4K performance mode, 60 FPS mode, with just a 7.5 millisecond gap between 4K and 720p. That's deceptive though. Unlike Thumper, Tomb Raider is a game that's much more demanding at higher resolutions and settings, and therefore there's a toggle for 4K 60 FPS mode or 4K 30 FPS mode called performance and resolution modes respectively. These are the options you get in the 4K version of the game. This is an important point. The graphical toggle does not appear if a lower quality version of the game is launched, and the user has no control over which version of the game is started beyond changing their bandwidth settings. Google usually interprets our internet as 4K capable and serves 4K games, but not always. And there's nothing that changes on our end, so we're not sure why. It's difficult to tell what's going on from the client side. Really, if these games are capable of being run at 4K on Stadia, it seems like they should always be running at 4K and scaled based on the user's screen resolution. Instead, we get a performance or resolution toggle, which is frankly embarrassing. Google can afford the hardware to run Shadow of the Tomb Raider at max settings. The end result for Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a not very good response time across the board, regardless of the quality we're given, with some really appalling performance in the 4K 30 FPS resolution mode, by the way. Metro Exodus is the real champion of bad response times here, and it's the reason that the scales on our charts for this piece go up to 300 milliseconds. At 4K, the game was very cleanly running at 30 FPS and was abysmally clunky. The experience is certifiably horrendous. From our PC testing, we can conclude that Metro at 4K is pushing Google's server-side hardware to its limits, which is, in a word, pathetic. A large part of the attraction of game streaming is the idea that anyone can run games at maximum settings on unattainably expensive hardware for a nominal price, since all of that upfront cost is eaten instead by the service provider rather than the user. If the hardware can barely manage 4K30, it loses that attraction. If Stadia lives on, Google will optimize games and upgrade hardware further. But this is the way things are right now. It's not a beta. This is a product that you can buy. Cue the footage of our teardown of Google Stadia controller, or just general footage of the controller for that matter. For our final round of tests, we wanted to examine the claims that Google made about its wireless Stadia controller allegedly reducing latency versus a wired connection. The idea is that the Stadia controller connects directly to the wireless router and communicates with the server. So there's one less hop. Controller to server and server to streaming device, rather than controller to streaming device to server and server to streaming device. The catch is that this wireless mode only works with the Chromecast Ultra currently, so clearly something's up. If the controller just communicates directly with the server running the game and ignores the streaming device, it shouldn't really matter what the streaming device is. The double catch is one we mentioned earlier. The controller can't be used wired with the Chromecast since the single micro USB port on the device is needed for power and optionally Ethernet. After two days of not getting our Stadia code, our best compromise to get this content up on time once we bought one from a viewer was using the results we'd already gathered to compare latency between Stadia and a browser on a PC, 1080p, with the controller plugged in versus wirelessly connected to the Chromecast capped at 720p, but with Ethernet still connected. So we're on Ethernet for both, it's just a difference of controller plugged in or controller wireless to the Chromecast. Ideally, we'd cap the two at the same resolution, but as the charts show, this wasn't necessary to prove our point anyway. Much more exact A-B testing will be possible when Google allows using the controller wirelessly on the PC. We have sincere doubts about a Wi-Fi connection from a controller being superior to a USB connection to a PC connected via Ethernet, even with that extra hop. The chart shows this. Response time was highly variable for Stadia in this thumper test, but even the fastest measurement we took on Stadia didn't match the slowest time we took on PC. Even if Google's plan to reduce latency by having a Wi-Fi enabled controller is working, nobody would be able to tell because it only works with the Chromecast Ultra right now 
And even at 720p, it shows a worse response time than just plugging the controller into a computer and playing at 1080p. And you don't need a super high-end fancy computer either. It's running a web browser. So anything that's not complete garbage would work. Mortal Kombat showed the same trend. For all the difficulty we had with this game in particular, it was unequivocally better on PC with the controller plugged in than it was on Chromecast with the controller wireless. Fighting games are, above anything else, a genre where people expect low and consistent response times. And although we're tentatively optimistic about the experience in a browser, the Chromecast and wireless controller combo, it's comparatively poor. Next to players of games like DDR or Pump It Up, yours truly, fighting game players are probably the next most neurotic bunch of gamers. We mean that in an endearing way. Some of our staff fit that audience. You'd only find a more vocal group if you logged into a CS 1.6 server and asked what the tick rate was. Or you made a server and set it to 60. Tomb Raider showed an even wider gap between averages than Mortal Kombat 11 did. Again, we're not as concerned with response times in this particular title, but we are concerned with the performance delta we're getting on hardware we spent $130 on versus, admittedly, a much more expensive computer that we and our core audience already own. But again, it's not about the computer you own, it's about the one Google owns. That's the whole point, so it doesn't matter. If the experience can be better on a PC than it can be on a Chromecast Ultra, it takes even more wind out of the sails of this launch. Although the sails, at this point, are collapsed on the deck, tattered and ruined, destroyed by self-inflicted grape shot wound from Google's own sloop. Like the golden age of piracy, okay? Next chart, Metro Exodus stayed roughly close to Tomb Raider in response time for both tests, with a 49.1 millisecond gap between average response times on the Chromecast versus in a browser. It was running at 60 FPS on both platforms, confirmed by examining the slow motion footage, so there's no excuse here. The end of all this then, it's amazing that game streaming works at all, period. It's impressive that it does. And it's a little scary for gaming in general. The culture as it stands today would be much different if it were all game streaming. It changed too when things like digital storefronts came out. But Google Stadia isn't quite there. Someone will get there. Whether it's Google or maybe Amazon certainly has the capabilities and the infrastructure, but this is not the way to do it. Either through just plain being naive and not knowing the market, or to maybe prove a point, Google and uh, its Stadia announced a games list that contains quite a few titles that just are already known to not play well with input lag. Destiny 2, a shooter game where that matters. Metro Exodus. Mortal Kombat 11, Samurai Showdown, Thumper, Trials Rising, Wolfenstein Youngblood, Borderlands 3, Dragon Ball, Xenoverse 2, Doom Eternal, and Windjammers 2. We haven't played all of those games, but none of them are ideally suited to a platform that will always have network delay built in permanently. There's another problem in that we can only stream 4K on a Chromecast Ultra, and we can only use the Stadia controller wirelessly on a Chromecast Ultra, so we had to use the Chromecast Ultra if we wanted either of those things. Otherwise, we would have left the Ultra in the box. Being forced to use it has raised an interesting point, though. The hardware is a weak point. The strength of Stadia is theoretically being able to stream just about anywhere on anything. But sometimes anything is a relatively weak Android puck connected to Wi-Fi, although we used Ethernet here. Even with the current limitations of Stadia on PC, we saw better response times in a browser than we did on their flagship Founders Edition product with their proprietary controller and their Oreo-shaped dongle that attaches, it's, it's an HDMI pass-through and that's about it. To Google's semi-credit here, the worst response times we saw were in Metro due to the game running poorly, not necessarily networking. Google is Google and they should have some truly space age ass server hardware dedicated to these games. Loading times are good, for example, but the fact that there are loading times at all is lame when you're renting computing power from a company worth uh, hundreds of billions of dollars. If they can eliminate any hardware bottlenecks based on the response times we saw in Thumper, Stadia will actually be a practical way to play some games. At the heart of it, Stadia is not terrible in every aspect. The latency is, is certainly objectively bad in a number of the tests, and it's actually not it's, it's playable in things like, again, Thumper. It's not, not that bad. It's sub 100 milliseconds. And now we get into some more of the subjective stuff. And hopefully you'll allow us to do that for this one. Uh, subjective point number one. Personally speaking, don't normally break rank, but not speaking as Gamers Nexus, but speaking as me. S <laughs> Steven has me. 
one of the things that I realized was I, I actually thought I don't have a great gaming computer at home, believe it or not. I play games in the office if I play them at all. And I was thinking, you know, it'd be kind of fun to actually just, just connect to Stadia at my house and play some of these games. I, I might enjoy them. I don't really want to sit in the office any longer tonight, but I don't want to build a computer for home right now. It made a lot of sense. But then I realized that I would have to buy the games in addition to already paying for the Stadia product, $130. And it just it kind of strikes you as, okay, so now we're paying $50, $60 for a game on a service that might not exist at some point in the near future. Google doesn't have a good history with these things. So you really can't blame the consumer for worrying about that. So Steam is not great either. We were worried about Steam too when it started really getting big and still are to some extent because if it dies, then you might be screwed. Now, Steam claims that it has a backup plan where you'll still be, ac be able to access the games. We don't really have a way to validate that or not. But in the very least, everyone can have relative confidence that Steam's not going anywhere anytime soon. Google has a history of giving up. There's an entire website dedicated to Google giving up. It's something about like products Google killed or Google product graveyard, whatever it is, we can put it on the screen. So basically you're in a situation where it's like Steam, except you're paying every month to have access to the games you already paid for. And that's not really, it doesn't feel great as a consumer. Our biggest problem with all this is, is again, Google. And although six people might have invested time into Google+, most of them didn't invest money into it, Google Stadia is a financial investment. And when Google likely kills this product, your investments with it will sink. That's, that sucks. We're also just generally concerned that the removal of games as a product and a shift even more to games as a service than it is now, which, don't be fooled, it's not a product that you own now either. These digital distributors can revoke it anytime they want. But again, you have some base feeling of safety with them, even though it's not truly yours. And moving towards games as a service even more is potentially a, a, it's a slippery slope, which isn't a great fallacy to use in an argument, but that's what it is. Because everyone wants to do this. Everyone sees the money. NVIDIA, if NVIDIA is aggressively pursuing something, you know it's worth a lot of money. And they've been trying to do this for a while. One of Stadia's listed features is that it lets you spend money to buy games. Literally the feature, the feature checklist for free versus Premier, or Founders or whatever it's called, is allowed to buy games whenever you want. Cool, so you're letting me spend money. Great, okay, thanks a lot. But anyway, this was really about latency. And the, the rest of it's just in case we don't do a follow-up video on this. So latency, not fantastic. And graphics, sometimes you get some really bad color banding when it's limited to, for example, if you intentionally, well, if, if you have to play on a lower bandwidth connection, if you stream to a Chromecast Ultra, you can get this sometimes. You'll see low quality video playback occasionally, even though we can check, I mean, we've got a fiber commercial line to this building. It's not like residential gigabit. It's like $900 a month fiber. The service is guaranteed. And even with that, even with looking at our internal network and knowing the, the data rate, Google will still dip occasionally and the, the video output doesn't look great. It's not on our end, it's on Google's end. So something's going on. But, That'll cap it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll probably spare the rest of the subjective discussion, although there's a lot more interesting stuff to talk about, but maybe in an Ask GN or something. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net. Uh, final note here, we might do more with Stadia. If people still care about it after this video, let us know. We can do frame rate analysis, quality of graphics, things like that, but we have more to move on to as well. And uh, also, the for each item you buy in the store, on store.cameronsexus.net this month, we are working with Eden Reforestation Projects to plant 10 trees. That's still going on all the way through November. If you buy two or three things, say you buy three shirts, we'll work with them to plant 30 trees. Pretty good deal and helps out the world. So visit the site for that. Otherwise, patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.